Welcome to my review of the VXDOS Sigma Probe Vehicle Intelligence Circuit Tester. I've broken this into a, a series of videos on my channel to make it a little bit easier for you to investigate the features that you're most interested in. But make sure you check out the firmware upgrade steps video and the important firmware upgrade of version 2.6 that's listed in that upper middle section there, the thumbnail for that particular video. I'll have links to all these videos down in the video description section of this video, and I'll include them in a video playlist as well. In this video, I'll check out the battery cable link, making sure that I can reach from the rear of the vehicle to the front, comparing it with the Power Probe 4 battery cable length, looking at the brightness of the LED on the front of the Sigma Probe, and check out the Sigma Probe setup screen. And then I'll give you my final thoughts about the entire product. So let's get into it. Going to connect the alligator clips to the end here. The point of this particular test is to make sure the cable length is sufficient running from the battery that's in the rear of the vehicle in the trunk to the front. And this is a 2014 Chevrolet Caprice Police Patrol vehicle. And the Sigma Probe has just under 20 feet length on the cable run versus the Power Probe 4, which is 23 feet 4 inches. So I want to make sure I could work on this vehicle by running it all the way to the front. And it does make it to the fuse panel over on the passenger side there. Now we're going to use the auxiliary ground, connect to a ground point in front of the fuse panel, and then use the smart test to quickly test a fuse to make sure it has power on both sides. Then after that, I'm going to turn off the garage lights to verify that the light on the signal probe is bright enough and we have power on both sides. Let's turn out the lights and actually the light's quite useful. I've seen some of these lights not work out very well, but this one's sufficiently bright. So the signal probe seems to work out with cable length and the light seems to be useful. Now let's move on to the last screen here, the setup screen which we've visited before to perform a firmware upgrade. If you haven't checked out that video, please check out the link in the description section. And here we come to the main setup screen. You can toggle it such that the beep sounds are active or not. So if I press that, it will turn that off and the key presses will no longer make a sound. I tend to prefer that particular mode. Language setup, you have a large number of languages that you can choose from to operate the Sigma Probe in. And I believe there's like 13 or 14. Yes. And then the left arrow to go back or OK to select. And then the firmware upgrade, which we've demonstrated before, that goes into a firmware bootloader mode and you connect over the USB connection to the computer to perform an update using a software program on a Windows machine, Windows laptop or desktop computer over a USB type A connection. You can change the style of the display to turn it on and off from the dark display. And if we select that and then exit out, you'll see that the main screen has changed. I tend to prefer the dark background, but if this is your preference, you can change that with that setting. So I'm going to go back and change that back. And then the about screen is where you'd go into to look for the firmware versions, hardware versions, the build dates for the firmware, and your device's serial number, which I've blurred out on this particular screen. And the left arrow to exit there, and the left arrow to go back to the main menu. Here are my final thoughts on the VXDOS Sigma Probe Automotive Diagnostic Test Tool. I was provided this free of charge for review purposes by VXDOS, so thank you very much for providing it. But again, I can give you my free opinion. There's no restrictions on that for this review. The uh, positives, you have a lot of features in this particular device. You have the oscilloscope feature, which I don't really see in other devices, at least none that I've had in my possession. The relay testing capability is nice to test four or five terminal relays. Component activation, you have the ability to do an out of vehicle component activation like we did with the headlamp bulb here we saw earlier in the video. And then you can also test items that are in the vehicle as well. The one thing that's a negative with the component activation, again, was the fact that the uh, pressing the down button was supposed to provide a ground component activation. So if you had a constant supply to a component, but they were switched on the ground side, 
you should be able to activate it using this, but firmware 2.6 and above, that's been disabled. It'd be nice to see that return at some point to have full functionality. So it's documented in the user guide, but it's not functional in the device. As if we press the down button, you can see this feature is being upgraded. So if we get back out of that, and then we can use the zero to five volt power supply. If you're testing five volt circuits, it's a nice feature to have in the device and the sensitive circuits um, that are, you know, five to volt five volt range circuits, make sure you use that one. The component activation is a 12 volt circuit and is not to be used on sensitive circuits such as ECUs, the engine control module, anything that's a module, you might want to be very careful with the component activation. It's meant for lights and motors and things of that nature. We have the ability with the fuel injector test to go ahead and test the fuel injectors. It would have been nice to have that about a year ago when I was working on a vehicle. I had two or three that are actually stuck and I didn't have any easy way to test them at that point in time, but this is a great way to do that. And then of course we have the quick positive negative test if you want to see if something's providing power or a ground. It's a quick and easy way to do that. So overall the feature set is great for this particular tool. I do wish some of the key presses here would be a little bit more deterministic. Sometimes you press them, if you have the beep tone enabled it will beep, but it doesn't actually acknowledge the button press. They work like 99% of the time, but there's a few times that it doesn't actually acknowledge it. So then be nice to figure out what that is going forward and correct that. The build quality is, is decent and I found that everything is working reasonably well. The connectors are good. You get the included connectors here for the relay testing. So that's the pigtail for that. You have the ability to use this as the probe tip when you're back probing something and uh, testing for voltage on that. You have the extension lead here for the signal probe tip as well. And then for the auxiliary ground, you have this connection to take advantage of the auxiliary ground with an alligator clip. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with the tool. So thank you again, VxDOS, for providing it for review purposes. If you found the information to be helpful in this video, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos just like this. If you're considering purchasing one of these devices and you would like to help this channel, check out the description section of this video. There should be a link to Amazon with an affiliate link that will allow you to purchase the product at no extra cost, but it does allow me to earn a commission on that sale. So please consider supporting the channel in that way. And thanks for coming to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.